This time last year, AMD and ASUS broke the laptop market with the G14. With the Ryzen 9 4900HS and NVIDIA RTX 2060 Max-Q, this thing is a monster thin and light. But this is 2021, and with the new models coming out, this thing's no longer king of the stack. So today I'm gonna do what I always wanted to do, which is add liquid metal to it. So regardless of how well this works, I do not recommend putting liquid metal on your laptop. The main reason being it is conductive. So if it gets on any other electronic component, it can short it out and destroy your laptop. Two, because it is so conductive, it can literally heat the chassis up to like burning temperatures. And three, you can definitely run into power limits to where adding liquid metal doesn't actually increase performance at all. So I went ahead and got a baseline on time spy of 5,421. It runs fairly consistently. We're seeing temperatures of around 93 degrees on the CPU and about 80 C on the GPU. So now it's just a matter of taking it apart, putting liquid metal on it and seeing how much better it runs on liquid metal. All right, so for this video, I've got some conductonaut now, you could just go ahead and use Cryonaut on your G14 and have no problems. It's perfectly safe. I just like to live life dangerously. Then I have some nail polish. This is clear nail polish. You probably want to use a colored nail polish so you can see where you might have missed a spot. And then I've got some RTV, black gasket maker. It's really good for just kind of like sealing the liquid metal in there and keeping it from going anywhere. And then in another life, I'd have some toilet paper to clean off my... GPU and CPU dies. So as you'll notice, my G14 has a gray backplate. I got it as a replacement because I wanted to cut a hole in it to use an external GPU with it. So your, yours probably won't look like this. It'll probably be a matching color to the rest of the laptop. Let's just go ahead and remove all the screws. Save that one for last. These last four screws, well, three screws at the front are shorter than the rest of them. And then this screw, kind of breaks the seal. And then just get in there with whatever random plastic you have laying around. Here it is, super easy to get off the back plate. Now we have to take off the fan assembly. So there's two screws over here, there's two screws over here, and then there's a total of eight screws dead center. Be super careful with these fan connectors. Don't pull by the wires. Get these wires out of the way, get all the screws out. Now it should just come right off. Oh, there it is. Easy peasy. <laughs> this is where you would replace your rattling fan motor or your thermal paste with Cryo knot, not conduct knot. Don't do what I'm doing, or at least if you do, don't blame me for it. Man, this stuff is actually pretty trash, not gonna lie. Asus, what is this? It is very chalky. I guess I'll try to use some alcohol to break up this stuff, because holy crap, it is so dried up. So it's very interesting what they, what they went and did here. There's like this black plastic around the GPU die, I'm guessing it's to isolate anything from touching, say if like, if this flexed a certain amount, it might contact some surface mount parts underneath that, that GPU die. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. Very weird. I know what it's probably for, but I don't like it being there, just out of like, the liquid metal getting underneath it. All right, that seems clean enough. <laughs> Let's go ahead and isolate the rest of this garbage. So I'm just using nail polish to cover all this up. All right, that seems like sufficient coverage for that. <sighs> I'm just gonna go ahead and apply, start applying liquid metal to the copper side. So liquid metal is kind of weird in that it doesn't actually like to stick to anything like the first time that you get it close to it. You have to just start spreading it around hoping that it sticks. A little bit of liquid metal goes a very far away. I guess it like etches when you start like kind of moving it around to where it doesn't stick at first, but once it gets through like the top layer of oxidation on the copper, it starts to stick to it. Remember, the goal is to go for as least liquid metal as possible. Like even something that small might be too much. 
Excuse the excess from over there on, on the CPU. <laughs> Remember guys, very, very small amounts. We do not want any of this leaking out onto the board. All right, I'm gonna let that be uh, good enough here. Now it's time to add some of the insulation. So this is just black RTV. Should do just fine for what we're trying to do. I have to poke a new hole in it. So this tube of RTV is kind of like super old, so I'm just gonna go ahead and spread it by, uh, by hand. All right, well, this seems excessive, but uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> Go ahead and put all this stuff back together. The chassis flex is pretty crazy, so you have to make sure you're pushing down on these screws so you don't end up you don't end up stripping any out. Alright, so all the screws are back on. Plug back in the fans. Or out the cables under the plastic. Alright, just make sure that all these are tightened again. Alright, there it is. Let's go ahead and put the back panel back on. I'm just gonna put it back in with a few screws because I don't wanna have something go wrong and have to take it apart and you know the whole 10 minutes. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and run time spy and see how it does. So wow, the chassis really did not get as hot as I thought it would. All right, 5,952, not bad. Let's see how hot it got up to. The temperatures are much lower. Yeah, wow, actually, over the stock G14, it actually scored 500 points more, which, that's like a 10% performance gain, and that's really nothing to scoff at. I'm sure you could get some of those gains just by overclocking, but nonetheless, very impressive. Wow, even scoring higher, it stayed at a lower average graphics card temperature. I guess it doesn't show your CPU temperature, but really impressive. So yeah, guys, that's really gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> please do not do this. Uh, I'll, get, I'll keep you guys updated on if this laptop ever actually dies, but I really do not recommend putting liquid metal on your G14. This laptop is worth way too much, and to be honest, you would not want to kill one of these. But with the steps that I took in this video, you can replace your stock thermal paste, which is probably garbage by now anyway. At least it looked really terrible. Like it was just so chalky. So go ahead and replace your stock thermal paste so you can bring your fan speeds down some. And like always guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.